Okay, Drake fans, there's been several inquiries about replacing a failed filter in the Drake TR3. There's been a couple of, of uh, contacts interested in getting crystals. <clears throat> as far as I know, no one on the face of this planet has these crystals except me. A couple years ago, I literally contacted every crystal distributor in the U.S. and internationally. No one had anything even close. Because they're 9 megahertz, it's an oddball frequency nobody uses anymore. So I had to go through a tremendous amount of trouble and 840 bucks U.S. just to buy new crystals to um, do the TR3. I basically spent $1,000 total to design this new filter and carrier system for the TR3. The original failure is that there's a design defect in the original crystals. They go off frequency. What happened is that they used iodine to tune them instead of grinding the crystals. And they left excess iodine inside and the heat from the sandstone resistors vaporizes that and deposits it on the crystal and changes the frequency. And if you'll take one of them apart, and look carefully, you can see a purple tint on the face of the crystal. That's the iodine. That information came from the company that originally made that filter. So, the radio has two bad filters, not one. The other one has the same defective crystals. One might be grossly failed, but neither of them are any good. And that big soup can takes up a huge amount of space. This is my... Uh, TR3 new SSB filter video. You'll see it about uh, nine minutes in. I start describing the, uh, the sideband filter. There is no such thing as replacing one filter. It cannot be done. It cannot mix old and new. Because a new is radically different and far superior. And there's no way to do it and have both filters aligned at the same time. Because the alignment is in T6 and T13, and to try to use the old filter would mean having to change the alignment when changing sidebands. Will not work. So, the fix is one filter. Modern, more modern radios did it that way. They used a single filter instead of two. In my other Drake videos, I explained the benefits of a single filter. But one filter, which is not switched, but two carrier crystals, which are switched. The carrier crystals are a couple dollars US. They're cheap. It's the filter crystals that are the problem. And never try to make a sideband filter with oscillator crystals. It will not work well. What I have are very special, specifically made filter crystals, specifically for sideband filter application. And they are stunning quality. <clears throat> but here's the problem schematically. There's this original schematic of the original Drake filter. <clears throat> That's one filter. <clears throat> the crystals and everything in between the symbols for the transformer windings are switched for the uh, different sidebands. Four crystals. A 165 picofarad capacitor called a neutralizing capacitor. And in my filter, there was one padding capacitor above the 1310 crystal. And the numbers 250, 250, 1310, and 1450 are the, are the frequency above 9 megahertz. So the top two crystals are 9.000250 and the bottom 9.001, 1310, and 11450. <clears throat> The T6 and T13 are transformer windings with tap secondaries, primary and secondaries. Those taps are connected to ground through that capacitor. This is not a lattice filter. Do not attempt to put a lattice filter in. It will not work. I did a video explaining why. Will not work regardless of who tried it or who thinks it will. Two engineers I know tried it and they both failed. I'm the only one that ever made this work. 
There's nothing wrong with the circuit. The crystals, the old crystals are junk. It cost me near $1,000 to build the first new filter. It's going to cost almost 2000 if I were to build the other filter for a custom order because I got by quantity next time. So two filters are out. The new filter is, instead of in a single unit like that, the new filter is split in two parts. And then the radio, <clears throat> half of it is here at T13. And the other half is up here at T6. And there's a piece of coax, RG174, that goes between the two. And that coax is part of what was originally that capacitor right there. So it's, so it's T6 here, eliminating the special three-wire cable that was here between the transformers and the filter because that's not available but basically solder the crystals right at the transformer windings um, the crystals must be enclosed in a shield do not ground the crystal cases shield them and ground the shield for an electrostatic shield must be or it'll pick up noise I tried it without it it didn't work but the crystals can literally be soldered <clears throat> right to T6 Pardon me, I didn't draw that correctly. There's a correct schematic. Left side at T6, solder the two crystal legs right to the transformer leads. Tie the commons, the other leads of the crystals together to the center conductor of RG174 and the RG174 shield to the center tap on the transformer. Then find some way to shield that. It may not be, may not be easy to shield it and do that I put the crystals on small pieces of pre-made printed circuit board, covered them in copper copper uh, leaf, soldered the leaf, soldered ground wire to the leaf, <clears throat> and then used short jumper wires. But however you want to do it. And then the RG174 jumper goes across the chassis about eight inches <clears throat> to a 160 picofarad capacitor. There's a little capacitance in the RG174 that will add to the 160. And the same circuit in reverse at T13, also the crystal shielded. This eliminates that fancy three-wire cable on each end. Eliminates a lot of straight capacitance. And your crystals have essentially no internal capacitance. 3.4 puff is trivial. New crystals are essentially no loss. So this makes a mind-boggling improve improvement and receive signal strength then <clears throat> that's only one filter <clears throat> for the carriers take out the old 9 megahertz carrier crystal at V16 get a small double pull double throw RF relay low capacitance and some pre-made circuit board and make this circuit the top crystal for uh, the lower side band on 40 for example is 9 megahertz the 70 picofarad capacitance has to be switched in and out with another relay because that 70 picofarad adjustable is what sets the CW offset when you go into CW in the TR3 and 4 the, the carrier frequency changes that's to get the, the carrier up into the passband of the filter, where the carrier has to be out of the passband for sideband. So that capacitor 70 puff is switched in and out between sideband and CW. Small uh, inline SIP read relay. The 9 MHz plus 1500 crystal is for the opposite sideband. And there is. Uh, about 36 picofarad with it to raise that 1500 9.001500 crystal up to about 9.0021 because 9 plus 15 is in the passband of the filter so we want that crystal just a bit above it's a passband like this 
um, lower side 9 megahertz just off the skirt and above it 9.00 about 2.1 the new sideband filter crystals are so good that those carriers can be brought within about 200 hertz of the sideband sk filter skirts just extraordinary quality and what that does is it allows passing the male voice through the sideband filter which would it would not do that in the, the original filters because the original filters were so sloppy that they moved the carrier about 900 cycles down which cuts out most of the man's voice the circuits are extremely simple it's a project to do this but there is no making this radio work without it then when you're done with that and get that working, you'll have to replace the balance mixer because it's garbage. Those old 1 and 270 diodes are just junk. You'll never get rid of the carrier leakage. I have videos on this channel about doing that also. That also a very simple circuit, easy to build. It's a pig to align. But if you ever want this radio to work and work correctly, this is what is required. If you want the crystals, uh, 15 apiece, plus shipping, I'll include schematics. You build it, have fun. KBYP.